Last week, we covered the new Burn Mall, a mall that looks exactly the same as so many others owned and renovated by Hull Property Group. And today, while we're not going to a Hull Mall, we're not doing that much better as we look at the Governor's Square Mall, a mall that looks exactly the same as Kentucky Oaks Mall, and both of which are owned by Kafaro, so it makes a little bit of sense. Yes, I know, this is not a dead mall, but I'm still not that impressed. Let's just get it over with. Governor's Square Mall was confirmed to be under construction in 1986 and officially opened on October 26 of that year as a 71-store shopping center. Although it was slow to get off the ground, the mall would host a first-year celebration event in October 1987, which would feature a ribbon-cutting ceremony with a fiber-optic ribbon of laser light, an appearance by Fubar D. Robot, the zany mechanical marvel, various fashion shows, as well as shopping bag giveaways. The center at the time employed up to 1,500 people, with more on the way as more stores moved in. Among these stores would be the following anchors. J.C. Penney, Parks Belk Partnerships, Sears, and Snyder's. It was no secret that the mall was a hit and would grow in popularity and traffic. And with it, a fifth anchor would come to the mall, Dillard's. Dillard's would officially open to fanfare in mid to late 1994. Although while the mall was doing well and things were looking better and better for it, the Governor's Square Mall was actually a mall killer as it competed directly with the Two Rivers Mall. The two coexisted for a while at first, but Two Rivers Mall was not well positioned and lacked any strong anchors. Eventually, the Two Rivers Mall would become demauled and is now little more than a multi-sided strip mall. Meanwhile, Governor's Square Mall was much better positioned for both local shoppers and regional shoppers and even siphoned traffic away from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, whom would have traveled to Bowling Green back then. As the mall hosted a 22nd anniversary event in 2008 and saw papers reflect upon its prosperous past, Snyder's would be the only major problem that the mall had as the store had closed. The specific date of its closure I was unable to find. Beyond that, Governor's Square Mall was seen as an essential part of Clarksville and an anchor for the surrounding retail that had gone up around the mall over the years. It also made Exit 4 on Interstate 24 the primary exit for Clarksville, Tennessee. Fast forward to today, and it's a wonder that Tennessee's DOT never opted to overhaul the interchange for the massive amount of traffic in the area. Ask me how I know about that traffic. As the 2010s came in, Dick's Sporting Goods would come to fill in the void left behind by Snyder's. In fact, it appears the old Snyder's pad would be subletted for Dick's and Ross Dress for Less. Sears, meanwhile, would announce closure in October 2018 and would officially close after liquidation sales in early 2019. After coming out the other side of 2020, Burlington Coat Factory would open in Sears' place in 2021. Not an ideal replacement, but it keeps all the anchor spaces occupied. But back in 2014, Kafaro would see it fit to renovate the mall and update its image to a modern contemporary look. Personally, with all due respect, I hate the carpeted look they went for. It's sterile, boring, and the gray carpet just makes it look dull. The tiled walk-up from the main entrance, food court, as well as the number of stores still going, 
are about the only saving graces I have for this place in terms of appeal. But that's just my opinion, and I'm sure many of you are going to say I'm factually wrong. At least the tiled areas don't look dark and dreary. Which is a shame, because the main entrance out front is actually quite appealing in my eyes. At least Kafaro can make a nice exterior. Today, the Governor's Square Mall continues to go strong, maintaining a strong tenant roster as well as a full line of anchors. Dick's Sporting Goods, Burlington Coat Factory, JCPenney, Dillard's, and Belk, which appears to have been relegated to outlet status. Kafaro, the sole owner of the mall from the beginning, does continue to maintain events as well as a mall walker program. So while I have a bone to pick with their chosen architects in the late 2000s and early 10s, I can at least respect them for keeping this mall successful and viable for the Clarksville region. Clarksville itself has a massive population, much bigger than you might expect. And while growth is slowing down in recent years, it's still in the double-digit percentile for growth by decade, as current population figures show 166,000 residents and counting as a rough estimate. And if you don't find a job that interests you in Clarksville, then perhaps you're willing to commute to Fort Campbell or Nashville for work. Additionally, Tennessee itself is a very popular destination to move to, as it has jobs and reasonable tax rates, at least as reasonable as state-enforced extortion can be. But that's for another day. This would also explain why most of the infrastructure is overburdened in the state, as the DOTs and services, they just can't keep up. So looking at all the numbers, Governor Square Mall should have no real reason to fail. It's the only game in town when it comes to shopping malls, and it has another population center to draw patrons from, and it's far enough away from Nashville to have no real direct competition. In fact, the only real problems with Clarksville is its crime. Now, it's no Detroit, but the numbers aren't great, with violent crime in particular being 48% above the national average. You might want to check those neighborhoods before you move. Now, focusing on the mall. As I travel out further and further from home and see more and more malls, I am going to be rather picky, especially in visual appeal. My local malls are similarly tenanted to this one and are doing fine themselves as they adapt to changing times. But you know what my malls are that this one isn't unique, distinctive, tasteful even? I mean, here, the food court and center court look okay, but they're still so plain, and the carpeted corridors. Ugh. You know, if I really wanted to be a dick, I would have made this in Kentucky Oaks Mall a double feature, but instead of the traditional format I follow for those videos, I'd interleave both of them together and not tell you which is which. Seriously. They're that close to each other in terms of visuals, at least on the inside. Governor's Square at least wins on the exterior appearance.
Alright, I think I've at least tried to get my point across about my personal take on this mall, but although I may not like it, my outlook on its future is not a dark one. Sure, I strongly dislike the interior aesthetic, but it is doing well, and it appears that it will continue to do well. I would suggest that Kafaro start looking at recreational activities to do for families, and maybe even teenagers. Well, provided the teens behave, for the most part, because I will admit that I was surrounded by a bunch of little shits as a teenager. Hell, I was one of them. Now, as we head out, for those of you that are on board and are willing to stick around for more malls, I do have some better ones coming soon. But sometimes, you have to take a look at those dark spots in mall enthusiasm. After this, I have a special mall in Alabama for you to look at, and after that, I have a pretty good one in Oklahoma. We're going to be bouncing all over this country before too long. After all, mall enthusiasm scratches that itch to travel. Thanks for having me, Clarksville, Tennessee, and on behalf of Tim from Exploring the Decay, who accompanied me on this trip, this is Doomy Grunt wishing you and the Governor's Square Mall farewell and good luck in the future. If you made it this far, just say Jack Daniels in the comments below. You don't need any context, just say it.